Welcome to the fifth episode of Bollywood Talkies with Outlook. I'm your host, Mitrajit Bhattacharya, and tonight my guest is a very special actor who has essayed roles as diverse as a middle-class housewife longing for love and recognition, a rock-solid wife of an NRI industrialist on a difficult mission, a combat soldier, and a high-ranking spy agent. An award-winning actor, a socially aware citizen, a wonderful human being, and a good friend of mine, Nimrat Kaur, welcome to Bollywood Talkies with Outlook. Thank you so much, Mitrajit. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Are you enjoying all the attention showered on you for your portrayal of the Sneem Qureshi in Homeland? How does it feel to be back after three seasons? It feels great. It feels wonderful to be back. Um, it's a franchise that, you know, I had joined when I had just done the lunchbox and it wasn't something that I was ever, ever expecting to be back to. Uh, so it's it, it, it's a really great sort of a surprise in my life, in my working life, you know, that I found myself in the middle of. Um, it's been really wonderful also because the finale has been really loved and appreciated the world over. So it's been really very heartwarming and very uh, lovely to see that, you know, a show as big and as long running as Homeland has ended on a very high note because that's always a tough one for any highly loved show you know for it to end on a high note is not easy um and there's always that danger of letting fans down etc you know so it, it it feels really rewarding and very uh, satisfying to be a part of something that you know kind of came together so well i was uh, i was able to be a part of their final season really it feels wonderful i wish we had kind of release this show at a, at a better time in, 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 in the world that we're in because um, I think <laughs> nobody expected, you know, the show to kind of release at, at this kind of, uh, you know, with this kind of a reality around us. But having said that, it feels really amazing. Wonderful. So how did Homeland happen? If you can just take us back, how, how, how were you approached in the first place? I think it was the fourth season when you joined them, right? That's right. So uh, I was actually in Slovenia for a film festival and for, I, I was invited there uh, as a guest with the lunchbox. And I just gone there for a fun trip and I was on my way back going to visit my cousin in London. And I landed uh, there on a Sunday and I had an email, you know, from the previous day from um, uh, my manager that, you know, the casting agent for Homeland wanted to test me for a part in London on the, on Monday. So I literally had half a day to, to prepare my scenes. And I, at the time, did not know what Homeland is because I was not aware of the show. I hadn't watched it. So as I was reading my scenes, I remember with my cousin, she screamed. She said, oh my God, this is Homeland. Oh my goodness, this is... Are you going, are you testing for Homeland? So I said, I don't know what's wrong with her. But I said, yeah, this is Homeland. I don't know what it is. But I went the next day and, you know, I tested for the part. And within four days, I knew that I was doing it. And I think I did not really know what I was getting into until after the response of the show of the season releasing, you see, and the way people had started responding about it. So that was very interesting. Um, that is how Homeland happened, uh, you know, season four, how it happened. But I was really clueless. I had not even watched it. You know. so did they see any role of yours and decided to cast or try to cast you in the film? Did they see any role of yours before that? That's right. So uh, Alex Ganza had actually watched the lunchbox and Alex Ganza is the uh, showrunner and the creator of, the, of Homeland. So he had uh, watched the lunchbox and for some reason he thought I'd make a great spy. It's a really welcome thought. I don't know how he got that from. You know the, the he, he must be having some vision to actually see Ela of London you know Box getting into. To him. Yeah, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. It's marvelous. Yeah. Like the Sneem Qureshi is a very very senior uh, uh, ranked ISI officer which in real life, no woman has ever reached that position. Uh, how did you prepare for the role? 
and at this stage i will also slip in the first audience question which comes from shubham tyagi in udaipur who asked that how did you prepare for the role of an isi agent in homeland i, I think these questions both are similar so if you could just that's uh, right how did you prepare for the role of tasneem kurish it's a tricky part to really prepare for because you don't really have uh you know any references to go by you just have some images or something like that you know on the internet uh you can see of some beautifully dressed pakistani women um who are in positions of power authority uh you know but you don't have a person playing a, a woman playing the director general of the isi because that's also typically a part or a rank that you would see filling be filled by an older man so it was an interesting challenge i would say because a she is not somebody morally completely in the right you know and when you have somebody you're playing whom you don't agree with i mean you i used to almost get aghast with the scenes i used to be reading you know i used to be scared of the stuff she was up to especially in season 4 i mean even in season 8 she's up to no good to a great extent but uh, it gets very difficult to uh play something that you you can't relate to as a as a human being you know but then you have to make sure that you bring a certain uh respect and dignity to the part because that's your real challenge and i think also the joy of being an actor because when else would you be somebody so ruthless and get away with it and be paid for it because it's a job <laughs> you know so it's a very exciting sort of a loop you find yourself in i did not really prepare prepare for say because you know culturally we're so similar we're all from you know pakistan my my ancestors are from there i did introduce a little bit of punjabi into her life uh, her spoken language because for me if she's from karachi she would have a grasp on the language and uh, you know how many pakistanis speak uh, fluent punjabi and urdu um so i introduced certain elements like that but i did not um, get into any mannerisms or any kind of specificities because i think firstly you're not given the whole script you don't know the beginning to the end journey you know you don't know the whole arc you don't know if you're killing somebody you don't know if someone's going to kill you uh, it's like a bit like you know you discover what you are going to do as an actor and you know what your part is going to unfold as as you go along so you are getting your scenes literally 3 or 4 days before you have to film so just getting your lines right sometimes is very important so for me i just made sure that i used to you know be in a position where i'm prepared to take on anything when i'm on camera across so, you know from the actor so tell us a bit about your family like you you your family comes from pakistan have you have you ever been to pakistan if you have gone to pakistan which part of pakistan have you been to never any, any? i wish never been but i it's a wish and i hope that you know our geopolitical situation is better uh in life because i'd love to take my grandmother you know to a gurdwara she really wants to go to i have never been there but uh, my father was from rawalpindi my nan nana ji his side my mother's side they were from lahore so one can just hope and wish it's a big wish for me uh sometime in the future who knows perfect any favorite co stars from homeland who you want to talk about what was the uh, like what was the relationship because you really worked over two seasons and i'm sure you're going to pick out some favorites there well uh, my favorite person would have to be art malik uh he was such a delight and a joy i mean it's impossible to not break out into peals of laughter when you're around him you know he's impossibly funny and uh, just absolutely a, a raging delight on set and he was literally everyone's darling like everybody used to wait for him to come and show up and you know from like the crew to the cast to the directors to you know um everyone he's he's really really delightful um mandy patinkin is another you know he's a school of is an institution of acting in his own is in his own right such a gifted actor what a um uh, such a just such an intuitive 
personality to be around you know he really uh, leads by example and he's somebody you can just watch forever and i used to actually be watching him instead of acting opposite him many times i used to just catch myself um uh, watching him and i sort of remind myself that, oh my god you know we're in this scene together so i better you know react to what he's doing accordingly and stop admiring him you know if you look at the other series which you have acted in and it was also a very big series which is weber pine uh how is the character of rebecca and how did it come about as far as you are concerned yes uh it was a very interesting show because uh it's a genre that i would have never expected to find myself in it's thriller horror uh it's futuristic science fiction you know all of that so i never thought that i would end up in a universe like that ever and uh, it is what they call color blind casting where my ethnicity did not matter um i was playing somebody called a rebecca yedlin i wasn't asked to change my accent so i was spoke as i did and a lot of that was very interesting to uh, be a part of and uh, the audience that loves a show like this you know which is uh, it's a niche kind of a genre you know not every, it's not everyone's cup of tea uh, so the audience that loves that show really loved it um i i used to find it a little bit strange sometimes to be in it because you know there are abbies and poor actors you know sitting in that makeup and they're called they're called abbies which are technically aberrations you know they are like these the only creatures that are left on the earth and everything else is over you know it's an apocalyptic show so it was very interesting it was a really great experience to be a part of that uh that cast and that that setup fantastic um you know you have shot uh, across the world like to in some fantastic places across the world like vancouver for weaver pine casablanca for uh, for uh, homeland and, and your instagram posts sometimes look like a beautiful travel blogging platform so my question <laughs> what what does travel do to you and then i will follow it up with another question your favorite travel destination and three places on your bucket list wow so i have been blessed to have been filming homeland season 4 in cape town yeah then season 8 in morocco uh we were finds in vancouver so i was there for months of course you know these shows they take up half the year sometimes um and you kind of really get the get get a hang of the place you get to blend in as a citizen you get to live that life as a local uh you relocate as they say as an actor you know so really it's it's really a wonderful wonderful uh, experience and i'm actually born into that nomadic kind of a life you know when you don't uh stay in one place for too long um my father was in the army so i was traveling every two or three years so i That's don't right. know any other life you know uh bombay is in fact the city the only city i've lived in for all these years now you know so it's uh, it's really i personally feel like i'm a i'm really meant to be an actor also because you know you you're not really married to one city or one place for too long you know you get the opportunity to kind of um live here and there in in, a, in different parts of the world it's really a great blessing so favorite destination and three places on your bucket list my favorite favorite place god i think cape town i think i, I don't think i've quite gotten over yeah it's absolutely stunning it's god blessed you know the the sun and the the fruits and the vegetable the flora fauna everything about that place is just it's a painting it's really it's a moving painting it's too 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 pretty um the three places i want to go to I have been dying to go to Hampi actually. I haven't okay. been able to go there. I really want to go to Hampi. Um okay. that's that's a big one. Bhutan is 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 a is my is a dream spot to go to. I'm also being a little bit careful with my choices because currently we don't know where we're going to travel. To. No, so you should be, I better you make should. a list which is more likely than not. In, <laughs> so. in your bucket list you should fly higher. So you should think fly the higher. most Yeah. <laughs> Most unlikely destination. Most South unlikely America places. Then. Let's 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 South America. Okay, yeah, great. If that's one big 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 
place that I would love to go to in South America. Great, super. You were also the lead actor in one of the first web series in the Indian OTT space, which is uh, the test case. And you played a lady combat officer, Captain Shikha Sharma. Did your army background push you to do the character? And how did you prepare for the role physically? Oh, yes. Uh, they had me at the one line narration, honestly. I mean, my eyes were sparkling when they said, you know, you're going to be playing an army officer. I mean, I could just imagine myself in that uniform and it's really a childhood fantasy come alive for me. Uh, so, yes, uh, it's a huge, huge part of, of my saying yes, you know, my, you know, my wanting to be a part of it. And then, of course, the fact that, you know, the show was so skillfully written and it was something that uh, I could really sink my teeth into. It was something that, you know, I've never actually had the opportunity to indulge in a part in the way that I've been able to with the test case. So it's actually a role that will remain the closest to my heart, uh, you know, unless I do something which is as big, if not bigger, uh, in that sense, you know, uh, or dearer to me. Um, so uh, how did I prepare for it? I did months of training, gave up coffee, gave up sugar, gave up carbohydrates. It was cruel. It was so difficult. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I've never been physically terribly unfit, but I've never been this crazy about fitness. So it meant uh, twice, you know, to, uh, training twice a day for six days a week um, with the, you know, food restrictions that came in. So, and it was very rewarding because I could eventually, you know, do pull-ups and push-ups and, you know, uh, I was physically so much more powerful, I felt, around that time. Um, it's, a, it's a great sense of, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a great sense of um, satisfaction. It really is so satisfying, really. How was it growing up as an army kid? Because, you know, a lot of times we have heard you speak very fondly about your army background. So tell us some fun part and some difficult part of growing up as an army kid. I'll start with the difficult part. It was saying goodbye to my friends. I used to That's right. hate that. You know, and as I grew older, uh, that, that became the worst part of being an army kid, you know, because you just had to constantly keep saying goodbye. You know, you would make friends and you would think, oh, we're going to die together. We're going to live together. Oh, my God. And then after two, three years, you're gone again. So that used to get hard. Uh, and also, you know, we lost my father at service on the line of duty. So that was something that, um, you know, it'll always be a part of the army experience of life i think you know um but having said that it's also my best years because of the, the upbringing and because of the because of all the experiences i have you know i got to live in places like arunachal pradesh you know in in the mid 80s mid to late 80s when um uh, you know that place was so raw and beautiful i yeah. was very young but i remember it so vividly you know I've spent my childhood literally hanging off trees and rolling in the mud and grass and um, you know it's it's a cantonment kind of a childhood it's so simple Correct. it's really very simple I really do um, I really do count that as as my as the best period of my life so which other places were you in as a kid like other than Arunachal if you could just take us through some other postings which you your father had uh, Patiala was actually the first and the last, uh, you know, place where we were together as a family. Although my father was posted in Kashmir as the last destination, but we did not really live with him. It wasn't a family station. Um, Patiala is very dear to me. Um, I went to my favorite school in Patiala, which is the other public school. It con continues to be my favorite school that I went to. But Hinda is a one place where we were. Arunachal Pradesh is uh, one, of course. Uh, we were in Pune for a bit, uh, in CME, where my father was studying at the time. These are a few, yeah. Now, coming back to your movies, like uh, 2016 was a very big year for you. I mean, you had the re uh, release of Airlift with none other than Akshay Kumar. And I remember you having tweeted about 
the fact that you got your first song of your <laughs> Hollywood career. So, you know, this was really quintessential big commercial Bollywood movie. How different right. was that experience? And so the interesting part is that it's a big Hindi film, you know, like in a commercial space because of Akshay Kumar, you know, and the canvas being so big. But Correct. I think from a commercial film point of view, it's an art film for them. You see, Absolutely. so it is very interesting because my prior experience to that was the lunchbox. Yeah. And uh, from that point of view, it was really amazing because I've grown up watching Akshay Kumar movies, you know. And uh, to again watch him and be opposite him was again an out of body experience for me because all his songs were like flashing past my eyes and I was in my head, you know, thinking of everything that I have dance to all of his songs and here I am opposite him being romanced by him it was unreal it was really surreal I used to break out laughing and I used to keep blushing and just like I used to just laugh so much I could not believe what was going on for a long time were you like a quintessential Bollywood heroine who really wanted to few big songs in a movie and you know be a part of it I'm quite sure you would you well, I think if the opportunity comes up, it's a pleasure. One has grown up watching that stuff. You know, I've grown up watching Madhuri Dixit and Sri Devi, and you know, I'm a, I'm an '80s kid, so I cannot, uh, I can't kid myself when I, when I, when I look at all of these images. You know, you want to be in them. Of course, you do. I mean, that's what Hindi cinema represents, really. You know, song and dance and just the uh, flamboyance. You know. Um, so yeah, I, I I absolutely would. And anyway, you know, I, I love different experiences. I would. That's 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 what I think I have signed up for this this life for. You know, the gains are that you know you get to live so many different kinds of realities. It's and that's that's a real big one. So I'd love to. Going back further to one of your highlights of your career, Lunchbox. Lunchbox is amongst the best. Hindi movie industry has ever seen. It is probably one of those cult movies. So how did Lunchbox happen to you? I will slip in one more question. And if my research goes fine, you were the first one to uh, to join uh, the cast even before Irfan and Nawaz were actually finalized. So if you could That's just right. take us through what happened. Yeah. Well, it was quite amazing because Ritesh Batra, um, you know, he, he, he had written the film yeah. and I think the screen, screenwriters lab at Sundance and uh, he, 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 you know, he he'd started looking and I think he had written the film with Irfan in mind, if I remember correctly. Uh, but when it came to me, I did not know uh, anything about it. I was just uh, given the script by a uh, uh, casting director and then uh, I was told by her that, you know, the director would like to meet me. And I met Ritesh a few times and uh, I found out after he had decided to cast me that he had watched a couple of plays of mine and he had watched, um, yeah, he kind of watched my work here and there, you know, um, and then we met and then, you know, I did not, it was one of those things that I think, you know, when you're destined to be a part of something, so it just comes to you. You don't even have to, um, uh, fight for it or so much as I did not even have to test for this part. I feel like it was one of those things that life had decided and, you know, destiny had planned for me. Um, and for that, I'll forever be grateful um, because I know that as a newcomer and the way that film was, it could have been anybody, you know, it did not require uh, a star presence or anything like that. Um, of course, you have heavyweights like Irfan and Nawazuddin, you know, who later were a part of the film. But I know that in my position, it could have easily been anybody. So I really feel God blessed, you know, to be given that opportunity um, and to have started my life and career with that. Okay. So I cannot but not ask you about the legend of Irfan Khan and uh, what has happened just, uh, just about a month ago and with him passing away. How was he as a person and a professional? Could you just share a few personal experiences of Irfan Khan? Oh, I wish I had, you know, many, many stories about him professionally because we never really got to share a frame in the lunchbox. I met him barely a couple of times on set. 
um, once was because we were shooting in the same location and the other time was because, you know, uh, we happened to like cross each other's path at, at that time. Um, I actually got to spend time with him and get to know him a little bit in and got to know him a little bit in Cannes when we went there to, to premiere the film um, now seven years ago, um, literally 2013. Like May, 2013, May 17th or 19th, May 19th. Uh, and I, he was really marvelously down to earth, really a son of the soil. Um, someone who was so close to uh, where he came from, you know, he really had his ear to the ground. And I think that's what made him such a special actor. And even before I got the opportunity to be opposite him technically in a film, I, I was a fan. I mean, I have been a fan of, of his work, like most and all of us, for, uh, for years before, you know. And uh, as a human being, when I got that chance to, to meet him and to like interact with him, his sense of humor was, was absolutely sparkling. You know, he was such a keen observer of life. He, he would notice so many different delicate things around you. One, 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 just, one could see where all of his gravity comes from, you know. Nothing was just normal. He, could, he had that ability to, I think, extract um, the extraordinary in everything ordinary. You know, he never saw anything as, ha, ye to kuch bhi hai. Ye to, this, I think, and that's the quality that made his ordinary man so relatable and so special. Uh, I'll always remember him for that. Any moments which you want to share? Because you have done a lot of red carpet with him and Khan. Yeah, we've something. done a lot of promotional work with him. Yes. Yeah, so so anything like, really, you were a newcomer. So I'm sure... Yeah, uh, I was actually you, very shy. Yeah. I was so shy of him. I could barely even like, I was awestruck. I was really awestruck. I could barely even look at him and talk or, you know, I used to just look down and, you know, you know, I was just so uh, intimidated, I think, but not, you know, I mean, he didn't do anything, anything to intimidate me. I think it was just me being me, you know, that cantonment girl would come screaming out and, you know, I would just be like, oh my God, if I'm God. You know, um, uh, the one memory I do have, and this is like, this is a very special memory for me, is when uh, uh, the Lunchbox had premiered at the Cannes Film Festival and we'd had two screenings on the day, one morning screening and one evening screening. And it was a crazy day. I don't think I'd even eaten anything because it was uh, press junkets and then the premieres and then the red carpet and Cannes is like clockwork, you know, people you miss that you know then you're then you soon enough roll off it and you know it's kind of crazy so you have to really be on the ball there and with me being so new I did not have any entourage you know the the production people were helping me out you know people who were like in the unit uh, you know that traveled with the film were helping me change and things like that it was crazy um, and I remember at the end of all of that that kind of a day it was manic it was um, absolutely crazy and, and good crazy, you know, because we had so much love and adulation coming our way. I was absolutely overwhelmed. And I remember I was sitting with Irfan and we were all uh, just relaxing, you know, we kind of put our feet up for the day. He just told me one thing very simply. He laughed and he said, you know, just enjoy uh, what's happening because all this good stuff and all these good times, they don't come very often. And uh, Life is about struggles and it's about working hard and, you know, you have to fight for everything. So when this happens, soak it up and just enjoy every moment and don't be shy to celebrate. Um, and I think that really resonated with me being a middle class service background um, working actor. Because I think very often for people who work the way they do and work their way up into an unknown environment like this, a completely new vocabulary and everything about it is new. Um, very often, you know, one is so hard on yourself that you actually feel scared of uh, too much joy or too much adulation or too much um, uh, happiness, really, to put it very simply. So that is something I really held on to and I've kept that quite close to my heart. Fantastic. I'll slip in the second audience question at this stage. It's Ira Singh from Nasik. 
who asked that can you just share your experience of working on peddlers like just for the sake of viewers peddlers was the movie which was released a year ago at the same can uh, 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 in 2012 if i'm not mistaken and it has yeah. some had some very big names associated with it like in terms of production and so what happened on peddlers uh peddlers was actually a remarkable film directed by vasan bala spectacular Correct. movie a uh, beautiful script and very ahead of its time and Correct. um really cutting edge story you know i played a very small part in it i was playing a uh, subordinate character uh, you know the love interest of the main um uh, the principal character one of the principal characters i was just playing his love interest and the few scenes i had um uh, i absolutely thoroughly enjoyed uh, being a part of that film. Anurag Kashyap had had produced it, and it was a great team, lovely actors, beautiful little film made on a shoestring budget, guerrilla style, uh, you know, filmmaking and all of that. Um, and we went to Cannes with it. I went to Cannes for the first time with uh, Peddlers in two thousand twelve, as you said. Yeah. Um, and uh, as an experience, it was amazing. I mean, it was just like unbelievable that you know we found ourselves uh, in at the Cannes Film Festival, nonetheless. um it it kind of felt like you know uh one big summer party uh you know from the university you know that everybody gets to go it was really really amazing i i was just blown away with the entire experience and you know how beautiful can was and and uh, it was rainy and cold and none of us were prepared for it um it really was like a backpacking experience only with like a red carpet rolled and some rolled uh, you know uh, rolled down the road somewhere really amazing experience any role uh, yeah. which is portrayed by someone else on screen have you ever felt you should have done it you could have done it better or you just had the pangs of doing that role It, it may not. Right. You had a different take on the role, maybe. So, do you ever feel about any of the characters which you have felt you should have done the role? Ah, uh, so I'll I, I'll try to be as honest about this as possible. And it's very hard as an actor, you know, when you love something so much or when you uh, connect with something so much. It is because the actor's done such a great job that you can't imagine anyone but that person in that part. So that's one. So I I can't ever imagine. being in something that i really love a lot as far as making something better is concerned that again is a tricky one because i know that so much goes into uh you know a part working or not working that you don't know what you could have done to make something better because you don't know if it's actually the actor who's not been able to do justice or is it the writing is it the direction is it just the production at that time what went wrong that something didn't work so i do have one answer for you though like when i watched uh, when i whenever i've seen homeland for instance you know it's uh, claire danes's part carrie matheson's part is something that's always fascinated me a lot that has al- always kind of intrigued me because it's such a such a uh, such a beautifully contradictory person you know and somebody so there is so much beautiful chaos in her world inside and outside and all of that that's a part that i that i really every time i would have, because the scripts are so fresh you know in my mind i've just you know uh, and it's a long format storytelling so it's always much more rewarding to be a part of like a like a long format uh, uh, you know show that is a part that i would have loved to be able to have a go at because it's it's got so much going so it's a part that i would often i would often like stray from what tasneem is doing <laughs> and carry see so you have to yeah. kill tasneem to do that role <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah okay okay any actor you look up to many many kate blanchett is one kate blanchett is really i think she's at the top of my list i feel like I remember her portrayal of Bob Dylan in I'm Not There, mm-hmm. and uh, she was more Bob Dylan than any male actor in that film. Okay, you know, yeah, I find her incredible. Fantastic. 
any underrated actor in the hindi movie industry who you would love to see more on screen i would say i don't know if he's underrated but uh, deepak dobriyal is very 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 interesting as a performer and uh, i don't know if he's underrated only because every time he comes on screen i have always read like crazy amazing reviews about him people love him you know so i feel like he very much gets all the love and his due but i would love to see more of him so at this stage i will slip in the third audience question Archana Arora from Faridabad asks as a woman and a theater artist was it difficult for you to transition from theater to films uh so the answer is uh, not really because the first time i uh, came into my own as an actor and started to see myself on the screen and figured who a director is what a camera person is uh was on ad film sets so i actually Uh, forward into the world of theater after i had already become comfortable with being on camera so i okay. modeled on camera for ad films for about 3 or 3 years or something like that and then i got into theater because i felt the need to really understand what a script was how i could read a scene because i i could tell that you know in an ad film there's only that much you need to do and there is only that much time for you to communicate something so theater was what uh, expanded my horizons and gave me that um ability to express myself so to come back to the movies from theater armed me with that uh, vocabulary now to you know call myself an actor to begin with i was just a model then you know i was just um a face that people said kare ye wo daily mil pari ladki hai aur ye wo wali you know titan wali ladki hai they would say that so then uh, for me it was it was the other way around and it wasn't difficult at all actually uh it was really interesting for me in that sense so i'll just add a small uh, follow up question sure. how has theater helped you hone your skills in movies has it helped you and if it has helped you in what way oh it's given me the legs i walk with you know as an actor why i call myself an actor is because i had the experience i have on stage you know before that i had no formal training you know reading two page scenes for uh, an ad film doesn't really make you an actor because you don't understand what uh, creating a world for somebody is that isn't yours so it's very um, i feel like there's no better schooling than than theater for anybody to uh, start calling themselves an actor there is no better schooling i mean uh because i don't have the opportunity to learn the craft at work film after film after film uh for me that was that was theater for me to to learn how to uh, be with a co-actor how to perceive a scene what what is it the writer is doing uh that you need to communicate how do you become a, a you know a medium of a story moving forward uh all of that all of that syntax and vocabulary and all of that came for me from theater and i always go back to my experiences whenever i even working on on the, on camera my principles and you know my um, everything that i uh, all my files are my data is all filed with my theater experience So, will we ever see you in future going back to theater? Maybe not just now, but maybe in three years, five years period. Would you? Would we see you doing theater again? One hundred percent. There is no doubt about that. It's only a matter of time before I find myself back on the stage again. Another space I love to see you your acting on screen are the commercials. And tell me about the challenges and. and the fun is in those roles in those beautiful commercials of cadbury's and titan and tanish they yeah. are almost like short films and uh, right. so what does it take for an actor like you to essay those roles which can fit in 30 seconds or 1 minute it's like uh, it's like fast food you know it's instant gratification it's okay. so lovely it's like that maggi you know it will you make it in 2 minutes and it's a meal that speeds your soul and you know 
I love art films. I really love doing art films precisely for all these reasons because you have to communicate a lot and the time given to you is very little and the, the ads you've listed are actually directed by the same director. So I've, yeah. had, a, I've had a fabulous time working with him on these ads. Um, the Dairy Milk Silk ad, for instance, we shot after the Lunchbox premiered in Cannes and uh, we shot this within two months of that in uh, Kuala Lumpur. And it was a four hour shoot and it was a road that was blocked and I remember it was raining in KL at that time and uh, they call what they call rain doctors you know on set so there is a specialist that comes and he starts praying to the rain gods he will karo barish finish it off yeah so a rain doctor was brought and the rain stopped it, it's not like it didn't work whatever he did it worked you know so we were we had to like, oh, stop the trap we had kind of block the road and um, I'm actually anyway a chocolate fiend, you know, I, I really don't need any reason to, uh, to uh, find some chocolate that I need to eat. Uh, it's like I'm, I'm addicted to it. So they brought a spit bag out for me. They said, you know, they brought it out and because I had to eat a lot of chocolate sitting. So I said, I said, what is this for? So they said, oh, you know, you shouldn't be eating, right? Like they were worried for my calorie intake. If I'm worried, you know, they just wanted to kind of look out for me. So I said, please, like, this is terribly, this is so offensive. I said, you're offering me a spit bag. You think I'm going to spit out the chocolate that I'm going to be eating? Not in this lifetime, please. Goodbye. You can leave. So I have some really, really great memories. And, you know, it's, a, it's an ad that we wrapped in four hours. Um, uh, the director of the ad film, Vivek Kakkar, uh, and his production house have really, really loved working with them. Always curious films. The Titan commercial, uh, the Titan Raga. Yeah, the Titan Raga commercial. So that was something, it, it was a tricky one to win because I was shooting Homeland season four at the time. So I had to be flown in for two days to shoot that ad and go back. And you know, dates are impossible to work around sometimes. It gets very hard. You know, the time difference and then you have to take a release from, um, you know, the current production schedule and all of that. Um, uh, it was uh, it was fabulous. I loved working in that ad as well, and you know, um, I, such great memories, such a beautiful set. And uh, uh, my co-actor, in fact, from that uh, ad is now a dear friend. So I'm just, you know, these are just such beautiful experiences, and um, I, I've really had the best time. And this is what's kind of started my career as well. I, I owe a lot to ad films, you know. Are they tougher to enact? Like in the sense, a lot of people feel that, you know, in 30 seconds to, to actually have a character graph and, you know, kind of to enact that is not easy. It's actually quite tough. So yeah. what's your take on that acting in commercials? My take is that you have to really luck out on the okay. script and the director. It's a lot to do with that. Um, I've been super fortunate. I've, I've had the great fortune to work in some amazing scripts and uh, I've also given up a lot of ad film work because I didn't want to be overexposed and you know be in every ad. So it does pay off because then you really get uh, to choose from the good scripts when they come by. So it's hard. It's very hard because you're you need to be very precise. You know, it's like a dartboard and you don't have much space. You have to hit the sweet red spot. You know, you can't like go left right. Um, and there are budget constraints, there are time constraints, you have only those number of hours, you're not like shooting endlessly. Okay, let's change track a bit. I heard you're watching a lot of cooking videos these days in the lockdown period. So are you a good cook and what's your favorite self-cooked dish? <laughs> I think I'm a spectacular cook, not just good. a good cook. I will absolutely oversell myself because I think I'm great at cooking. So it's a labor of love. I really enjoy it. And uh, I, I don't experiment too much, which is why I think I'm a, I'm a great cook because I cook similar things. I love cooking Indian cuisine a lot. So I've actually gone to uh, cooking my mom's recipes and my nani ji's recipes, you know, things that I've grown up on. I only get to eat all these lovely things when I go to Delhi. So I actually made it a point that I'm going to learn everything and uh, you know make them now is the time so i tried curry chawal for the first time curry basically you know and pakoda curry that is it's not the sindhi curry so it's 
it was really really lovely and i and i give the food out you know i send it to my friends i gave it to my neighbors i i found a way you know to to pass the parcels on so uh, whether they loved it or not i was told they loved it so and i loved it too so <laughs> fantastic fantastic another aspect of your life uh, which i want to touch upon is your impeccable social media presence you really know what to say and when how do you manage to be so correct and so loved on social media any tips for others thank you so much i really find this so nice to hear thank you very much for that lovely lovely compliment i think i i try to not exploit the fact that you know whatever i write will be read and received and uh, picked up i don't write or post anything for effect ever um i feel like i should respect the space i've been uh, allotted in this big universe of you know public figures and and all of that and i don't take that for granted and i feel like there's a responsibility no matter what i um do or no matter where i go who i become or where i reach or whatever uh i don't find it there's no pressure let's put it that way i don't find or feel any pressure to uh i have to comment oh my god this happened i have to say something now uh sometimes i choose to be quiet because i feel like it's just one more voice adding to the noise and i don't even uh, see the point in that uh people have a point of view on that as well they say that oh you know it's better to say something than be quiet they are entitled to their opinion i'm entitled to mine because i know that it's a double edged sword you see um if i say something uh i'll be um targeted for being one of them you know who just wants to be heard and if i don't say something again you know so i feel like i've never turned this into some kind of a reward game it's not about followers it's not about retweets or likes or i just write something that i feel in the moment at that time when um edit that a little bit <laughs> just so that you know it's it's a refined version of you know what one is thinking because that's not always the best um uh best uh, thought to put out there but that's really all that's it not so much. your tweets are so correct that you can't even find english errors in them i'm just i'm just putting that as a second compliment so that's fine <laughs> oh, thank you okay so immediate ag- agenda after the lockdown is over what do you plan to do get a haircut okay. i don't have a lover or a husband or somebody cute in the house yeah, you yeah. know uh to yeah. cut my hair i mean my yeah. cats are ready to eat them but uh, you know I, yeah. <laughs> that's just the best yeah. Yeah, yeah i need a haircut quite bad okay. yes the hair is okay. like it's got a life of its own now super so <laughs> now we are coming towards the end and i will ask you some one word answers don't think so much just give simple answers favorite cuisine favorite Indian. cuisine indian favorite restaurant pali uh, pali village cafe If you were not an actor you would be a travel journalist. Okay. Favorite director, actor and movie. Favorite director Alejandro Iñárritu. Okay. Favorite uh, actor uh favorite actor Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh favorite movie God this is so hard. interstellar interesting 2020 seems like a dot 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 like a black hole 2021 will be dot 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 mm, will be 2020 redux thank you nimrat kar for talking to me on bollywood talk is with outlook Stay safe. See you on the other side of the break. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. This was lovely. Thanks a lot.